The materials needed for this month's project include eight pieces of string or yarn cut about 46 inches long, a swivel keychain clip, fabric dye or tie dye, and then you also have gloves in your bag for when it comes to handling the dye. And then a couple things that aren't included in your bag that you might want to grab are tape, or if you have a clipboard, that would come in handy too. This is going to be used to hold the actual keychain in place when it comes to tying it. And then you'll need some sort of container to put the dies in when we start to dye our keychain. I'm going to be using glass containers like this. These are mason jars. You can use whatever works best for you. Just keep in mind, as you can see here, the last time I did this, it did leave dye on the glass jar. So whatever you decide to use, just keep in mind that the dye might stay on it. So don't pick anything that you're going to want to use um, for like drinking or eating or anything like that. And that is all we need. So let's get started. The first knot we're going to make with our keychain is called a lark's head knot. So as you can see, I have two already done here. And we're going to do this with all eight pieces of our yarn. So in order to do this knot, what you'll do is you'll take your yarn and you will fold it in half like that. And you'll take the loop end of it and you'll place it under your keychain like so and pull the loop end over. So it looks like that. Then you're gonna grab the other pieces of your yarn like that, pull it through the loop and pull it tight. So it looks like that. I'll show you one more. So again, you take your piece of yarn, you fold it in half, and you take the loop end, put it under your keychain, and fold it over so it looks like this. Then you're going to take your other pieces of yarn and pull it through like such. And again, you're gonna do that for all eight pieces of your yarn. So I'm gonna do that with mine and be right back. Okay, once you have all eight pieces tied with the lark's head knot, it'll look like this. As you're going, it starts to get a little crowded. So what I ended up having to do is I kept having to kind of smush them together like this to make room, but they will all fit. So the next step is we're actually, this is where I'm gonna use the tape and tape mine down because we're actually gonna start tying down and it just is easier if you have your keychain secured and in place. You don't have to worry about it moving around when you're trying to tie the, the rest of the keychain. So what you wanna do is you wanna turn yours so that the side where it shows the actual knot, so see one side looks like this. We want the side that looks like this facing up. So you want that to be facing you. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to place mine down. I'm going to use my tape to secure my keychain. I'm just using a piece of cardboard backing. But again, if you have a clipboard, you can actually put this piece under the clip of the clipboard and that would work really nicely too. Or you can tape it to a table that's what you want to do. I guess it's not necessary to tape it if you don't want to do it. I just find it way easier to have it taped down and secure when I'm going because I don't want to have to stop and constantly readjust if it keeps moving. And you're going to need both hands when tying. You're not going to be able to hold that piece like we were um, with the Lark's head knot. So I definitely recommend securing it down. Okay, so now my piece is secured. 
what we're going to do is we're going to separate our pieces of string. So we're going to have three on the right side. And then we're going to have three on the left. And then we're going to leave these two in the middle. So one, two, three on the right, one, two, three on the left, and then these two in the middle. With these two in the middle, we're actually going to tie um, what is known as a square knot. Okay. So to make our square knot, we're actually going to take the two center pieces and leave them together like this. Now to make the actual square knot, you're going to take your left string and make like an L shape or a four over those center pieces. So like that. Then you're going to take that other that right center string, and it's gonna sit on top of that four or L shape. Then you're gonna take that same right string, put it under the center strings like that, and then pull through, and then just tighten it. like so. So that is half of our square knot. So now we need to repeat this on the other side. If it makes it easier, as you can see, I had to keep holding the center as I was pulling it up to tighten that knot. If you do happen to have tape handy, you could just tape these two center pieces down so that they stay put because we're not really doing anything with those. So now we're gonna do that same thing on the other side to complete our square knot. So this time you're gonna take this string on the right and make a four or L shape um, over those two center pieces. Then you're gonna take your left string, place it over that L or four shape. Then put it under those center pieces, like so, and pull through, and then just pull both to tighten it all the way to the top. And that is our square knot. Now I'm going to remove this tape because I don't need it anymore. Now what you're going to do is you're going to separate those and just add them to each side. So now you should have four pieces on each side. Four, one, two, three, four. Now to complete our macrame keychain, we're gonna start on the right side. We're gonna take the farthest string and hold it diagonally across the others, like so. Then 
they're going to take each piece and fold it over like that again kind of making that um, L shape or four shape and then pulling it through come behind and then tightening it and you're going to do this twice with each string so again fold it over pull through and tighten we're going to do this with each um, pieces of string on each side. So fold over like so, pull through from behind. And just do it again. And then we have one more to do that with on the right side. So again, fold over, pull through and tighten. Fold over, pull through and tighten. So it looks like this. All right, now we're gonna set the right pieces kind of aside for right now. And we're gonna do that same exact thing that we just did on the right side, on the left side. So take the furthest left piece and hold it diagonally across the other pieces. Then we're gonna do the same exact thing. So fold over like so to make that like four or L shape. Pull through from behind and tighten. Do it again. We're just gonna keep doing that until we have no pieces left on the left side. My right hand is my dominant hand, so when I have to do this with my left, it gets a little tricky. So you might notice that um, when you're doing yours too, that whatever hand is your dominant one, that side is gonna be easier to do. Okay, so we've tied all of them on the left and all on the right. So now we just need to complete it. So you're gonna take your two middle ones and do the same exact thing. Make that L or four shape. Pull through. And tie it. I'm just gonna do that again. Four shape. Pull through. And tie it. So that is the basics of what we're doing and you're just going to continue that process to get the desired length that you want. So.
actually like this length, so I think I'm going to stop there and keep mine pretty short. Again, you can go as long as you want and make it as long as you want. You just keep tying it in that same pattern. But I think I like this length, so I'm gonna stop there. If you wanna keep going and make yours longer, you can just pause here and keep going until you've reached your desired length, and then you can come back to the video and um, see how to do the rest of the process. The first one that I made, I did make it longer, so as you can see, that's probably about half the size of my first one but I like it, so I'm gonna stop here. Okay, so the next part is to cut some of the remaining string and then we're going to fray it like this one is at the bottom. So. I'm going to leave probably about like that much. Cut it. If you want an exact measurement and you have a ruler handy, you can always measure. Okay. And then to fray it, these come undone pretty easily, so you could just like untie them yourself, like so. As you can see, they come undone really easily. Or if you have a comb handy, you can use that to unfray them. And I'll show you what that looks like if you do happen to have a comb. Okay, so to fray it with a comb, you would just hold it and just comb out the ends. Like I said, these come undone, unraveled pretty easily. So if you don't have a comb handy, you could just unbraid them yourself. I just wanted to show you what it would look like if you do have a comb. Okay. So that is our finished tied macrame keychain. And the next part is to dye it or ombre it with fabric dye. Okay. So the next part is to actually dye our macrame keychain. A few things to note before you do this, you're going to want to empty your dye in a container with warm water. So do that first. And then you're also going to want to wet your keychain, get the yarn wet before you dye it. This is where you're also going to want to put your gloves on because the dye can stick to your hands. As you can see, I'm not wearing mine, but you should have gloves in your bag that you got. So I would put those on before you start dyeing. Another thing is, as you can see with my first one, I only used one color. I had um, trouble getting the ombre to work with just the one color. It kind of worked, as you can see, it's lighter up here, and then it gets darker. So if you prefer just to use one color, you don't have to use both that I gave you. You can just pick whatever color you like better and use that one. I am going to try it with ombre in two colors. So I'm gonna do the bottom half of my keychain, probably the purple, and then I'm gonna do the top half, the pink. But again, it's completely up to you how you wanna do this. Use both colors, use one, whatever you wanna do. All right, so again, warm water um, with your dye, and then wet your keychain a little bit and wear your gloves. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my lighter color, and I am gonna dip the top of my keychain in it. Again, if you want to just use one color, you can. The first time I did mine with just the one color, I even left it sitting overnight. Um, but as you can see, it still didn't show a great deal of difference when it comes to the top and the bottom with how light and like dark the color was. Okay, so probably gonna do about like halfway. And I'm gonna let it sit for a couple minutes. Okay, I'm 
gonna pull it up now. I like how light that pink is. The longer you leave it, the stronger the color will be, but I like it that light pink. So now I'm gonna dip this bottom half into the purple. If you like the way it looks right now, just going from one color to the plain colored yarn, you can leave that too. I think that looks pretty cool, but I'm gonna dip my bottom half into the purple. Okay, I'm gonna leave that for a few minutes. tired of holding it you can kind of rig it up like how I did I just put like a pin in between to hold the keychain up and just taped it to the other jar because if you want again if you want the colors to be stronger you're going to want to let it sit for longer so I'm going to leave this to sit for probably like five ten minutes and then I will pull it out and we will finish um and see what it looks like it has been less than 10 minutes, but I was checking on it and I actually like the color where it is. So I'm going to take it out. As you can see, mine are kind of faint just because I didn't leave them in for very long. So if you want like um, a darker color, definitely leave it in for longer. If you want to try this again with just one color and ombre it with just the one color instead of the two, start off with um, just a little bit of water and your dye first and have it be more concentrated and then as you and that will be the bottom of it because that'll be the darkest and then as you want to move up and make it lighter and lighter and lighter then just add more water and more water and more water and it'll keep diluting that color as you can see <laughs> it touched the spots on this jar where old dye was um, so that's why mine's colored up there, but yours won't look like that as long as you're using a jar that doesn't already have dye left over from a previous project. So now the next step is to run this under a little bit of cold water to rinse some of the extra dye out and then we will be done. And that is my finished product. Obviously it's still wet just because I took it from the dye and rinsed it under cold water for a little bit just to rinse off any extra dye out of the fabric but that is it as I said earlier I kept my colors pretty light I liked the look of that but again if you want yours to be darker leave it in there for longer you can even leave it in there for overnight if you just want to like rig it up like I did towards the end tape it make sure it's sturdy and it's gonna stay and not fall in there and then leave it for long periods of time. You can leave it in there for like 20 minutes, 40 or overnight and see how that changes the look of your keychain. But I think it turned out pretty cool using the two colors. I think that I liked that better than the first one that I did. This is my first one, so just the one color. It did ombre a little bit, but not as well. But that is it. Thank you guys for joining me again this month for another teen third thursday project i hope you enjoyed the project and had fun making it um i would love to see your finished keychains if you would like to post them on instagram and make a post or tag us in your stories our instagram handle is at j simpson library i would love to see what you made and how they turned out so thanks again for joining me and hope to see you next month for another teen third thursday